Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keegan and welcome back to another Supercoach video on this channel. And today's video is going to be concerning my second Supercoach team that I'm running this year, my All-Star team. Now if you didn't watch my video, my last video on the All-Star team, I'm going to quickly explain the rules. So this All-Star team has to have a player from each team in the league. So the team that plays on the weekend has to feature a player from each team that is playing that weekend. So in buy rounds, there'll probably be a few less players I have to worry about. But as of round one, I've got 18 players from 18 different clubs that do need to be scoring in this game. Now, usually Supercoach is all about getting the highest score you can possibly get. This team will be looking to score as high as possible, but I'm more worried about making sure that I've got a player from every team playing in this game. I'm going to see how long I can do this until I finally get to a point where I can't play a play from every other every team and then the challenge has ended. Before I do get into showing you the team, make sure you do like the video, subscribe so you don't miss any of the uh, different Supercoach videos that do come out of this channel. I've been getting a lot of really good support lately and it's really, really appreciative for people that do comment and do do talk to me on my videos, giving me suggestions or questions or anything like that. I do really enjoy it and I do try to reply as much as possible, so thank you for those. Anyway, without any further ado, I'm going to show you the team. I'm going to explain some of my choices. Anyway, guys, I know what you're waiting for. You're waiting for to see the team. So anyway, here is the team. So here's the team that we're looking at at the moment. As you can see, there's a few weird choices in there, and I'm going to explain myself. I'm going to quickly go over each team and go over my choices for that team, starting with Adelaide. So Led, he's actually in my... Uh, my well, you could say my first uh, super coach team, my team that I'm looking to score high on. He's going to be he's going to be a really good player. He could see some midfield minutes. Um, he will score well, um, and I reckon he is a decent choice. Brisbane, uh, I had Barry in the team until it was seen that he has injured himself. So I put Skinner in there. I'm probably as far as Brisbane goes. I know they're going to have a lot of good rookies, so they're probably going to have a rookie in this team. I'm probably not going to have a Brisbane. Um, top liner in this team to start with anyway. I'm going to start with a rookie because I know they have a wide choice. So if they get injured or if they get dropped, I can switch rookies out pretty easily because I know Brisbane are going to be playing a fair few of them from the start of the season. Carlton has uh, Simpson. He's a great player. He's playing off the half. Like, is he going to be as consistent as last year? Who knows? But as far as filling out those backline spots, it was a choice between Simpson and Doherty. Uh, I've gone with Simpson because he's a little bit cheaper. And as I said, I'm not worrying about huge scores, but he show, Simpson has shown that he can score pretty well. Uh, just as a quick side note, as you can see, my running salary, I've got $32,000 uh, $32, left. If you've got any suggestions to change my team, please do let me know in the comments below. As you can see in the back line, for Collingwood, I've gone with Lockie Keith, who is another rookie. He's not a rookie, but he's a rookie price defender who by all accounts has been training pretty well so he should be he could be seeing play around one and if he does he'll be in this team for sure. I had Pendlebury to start with and then I had to switch a few things around with a few injuries to do with my ruck combination. So I've had to chop and change a bit. So I did have Pendlebury originally, had to take him out, had to put Keith in and move other people around. Uh, for Essendon I have Heppel. Um, he's in actually he's in my proper team, my high scoring team. He is going to be a player that at, he's at a good price, and at price he will be scoring pretty big. I originally had McGrath, and then I read a comment from the media about how McGrath could possibly not be playing as many games as first thought. So I took him out. I got a bit worried, I got a bit scared off, and I took him out. I originally had, for the Dockers, I originally had Sanderlands in, and in my ruck portion, I had Sanderlands with gold sinners, and what happened was... Uh, Sandilands has injured himself or he doesn't look likely for round one so what I did is I switched Sandilands to Goldstein and then I had to chop and change some players around so as I said no Pendlebury at the moment so my Fremantle representative for this team actually at the moment is Harley Burnell who's a mid-price player but he's capable of being a premium price scorer so if he starts round one and if he's if he starts and he's fit round one he will be definitely be in this team Geelong, well, pretty much Patrick Dangerfield. He is the premium player in the competition, so pretty much gone with him as my Geelong player. Hard to go against that. As far as the Suns go, I've got David Swallow, 280,000. He can. He's also as capable of being a premium price scorer. He'll be good. He'll be a good player to start the season with. He's been training really well, so he'll be playing games pretty much from the get-go and hopefully be putting up some decent scores. 
GWS um, for GWS Shields, another one which I know he can go the distance. I know he's a quality player. I had him last year, and he was scoring. Uh, he scored very well for most of the season. He's my GWS pick. I reckon he'll take that next step this year. Whereas GWS, hopefully for them at least, push towards a premiership. I reckon GW uh, she will be at the forefront. I reckon he'll improve a bit this year, and he'll prove to be a hundred and ten plus average scorer. We have got Rufford. Uh, as I said before. He is hopefully fully recovered, and um, he'll be a great price. He'll be job security. If he's fit round one, he's not leaving the team. So in this sort of competition where I'm more worried about players playing consistently, Ruffhead is one that I think will be the consistent player in the Hawks team, and I'm going to be putting him in this team. Same reason for Gorn. If he's fit, he's playing every game without fail. Um, He'll dominate. He'll... um, He'll come on, he'll dominate, and he'll be a really solid player for Melbourne. Hopefully high scoring for my team as well. And he looks like the dominant Ruckman for this year, especially with those rule changes. Zeeble. Now, I did actually have, sorry, I did actually have Zeeble in, but because of those switches and those injuries, I had to switch around. So actually this time I've got Goldstein. Now Goldstein, he's he needs to recapture the form from a couple of years ago. I think it was 2015 he had a breakout year. 2016 wasn't his best year. He was injured a bit. He didn't really... He, was, he wasn't he was moving very well, and he wasn't getting to a lot of contests. So I'm backing him in this year. I'm hoping he's recovered from those injuries, because if he has, he can go get up to Max Gorn's level, and I could have those two rucks side by side. They could be scoring big for me and making me actually put up some decent scores with this team. I've also got Hibbard uh, as a rookie for North Melbourne. He might get some game time. If he doesn't, that's okay. I can switch him for someone else. But my main player from North Melbourne in this team is Goldstein. Uh, So Wingard is interesting because Port Adelaide, for me, along with North Melbourne, Port Adelaide don't really have anyone that really stands out that they're going to have an absolutely bumper year. So I've gone with Wingard because the forward line's pretty thin as it is, and he has shown in the past that he can be a quality player. Whether he'll be that quality player this season, who knows? But his job security is pretty safe. He's not going to be getting dropped for too many people in that port forward line. And at 439000 he's a pretty solid choice to be filling out my forward line. There's just There didn't seem to be anyone else. I don't think Wines, Gray, um, Boak, they're okay, but they have the tendency to play the off game. Whereas the midfielders I've picked, I find, other than probably one, are usually pretty consistent. Richmond... I have got Dion Prestia in my Richmond team. Now, I'm a Gold Coast Suns fan, and the way Prestia left last year, it sort of hurt me a bit. But I reckon moving to Melbourne, he might be a bit more comfortable in his surroundings. I reckon he'll kick on. If he's if he stays fit, he'll kick on, and he'll be a very, very good player. He's not going to be one. He's not going to be a player that's going to average over 110, but he's one that can probably get you around 100. And for this sort of competition, I'm a okay with 100 average if Prestia can stay on the field. And at 508, he's actually a pretty good price. St Kilda has Nick Rewalt. Now, Rewalt is a bit of an interesting uh, interesting choice. He um, he may not play every game, but I reckon at, by the, at the start of the year, in the first nine or ten weeks, he'll definitely be there playing every single game. And he's shown that while he's had one or two big injuries in his time, he sort of doesn't rest too much unless it's because he's tired. So at the start of the year, in the first nine, ten weeks, I reckon Rewalt will be there every single game, and I can depend on him to be there, as well as being a really, really high scorer in an improving St Kilda team. Now, once he gets around 10 or around 11 or whenever, and he starts getting rested, then I can look to switch Rewalt out for other players. And also, I've got Freeman. If Freeman's playing, then I won't have to worry about switching Nick Rewalt out for another St Kilda player. But Freeman's there as a backup. But at the moment, I've got Rewalt as my designated St Kilda player. As far as Sydney goes, as you can see, I've got Isaac Heaney in the forward line. Again, the forward line options are pretty thin, so I've gone with... Heaney, who is 433,000, but he had a pretty good final series, and I'm hoping he continues that form into this year. He's another year old, he'll be another year bigger and another year wiser, and I reckon he's going to be one that, in, even in a regular Supercoach team, he'd be one I'd be keeping an eye on to possibly look at pushing on towards 100 average, which for a forward line, 100 average is very, very good. Uh, for West Coast, I have got Prittis. He's probably not my first choice premium midfielder. I'm actually not too happy is there, but West Coast didn't have a lot of choices, to be honest. I would have probably looked to put Nat Nui in if he wasn't going to be injured out for most of the season. So I've gone with Prittis. It's decent choice. Um, he will score. He'll score well. 
But I just never been. I've never been a fan of him as super coach, even though he's proven in the past that he's an absolutely fine scorer. I've just never been a huge fan of him in this competition. He's there. He'll score well, but I'm not too happy about Prius being in there. And the last one is Johannesson, who's in my regular team. I think, and I said it in my last video, I think he's going to have a breakout year. And I think at 513,000, he's going to be a really, really good pick. And I reckon a lot of people are probably looking at him as a cheaper backline pick that will explode heading into the new season. There's my team. I've quickly gone over a couple of players. Um, so in this team, I'm sort of more looking for consistency of games. So hopefully playing your 21, 22 uh, games a year. That's probably more what I'm looking for other than high score. So I'm willing to sacrifice a bit of potential high scoring for players that I think will be playing those uh, 20 to 22 games. Or even players that are easily trade out, I can easily trade out for other players from their same team in similar positions. So that's my thinking behind it. Do let me know in the comments below if you think I've made some wise choices as far as consistent players that are probably going to play every game. Or if you think I've made a few errors or a few blues that you think I might need to go back and consider if I'm worried about them playing every game. As the season gets going, you're probably going to be seeing more and more videos on this channel. For the time being, there's not going to be a lot of videos because I am, obviously the season hasn't really started, uh, so there's limited stuff I could talk about as far as Supercoach goes, but as the season gets a bit closer, I'm probably going to be putting up a few more Supercoach videos or AFL videos in general that I hope you guys do enjoy. And do make sure, let me know in the comments below if you enjoy these type of videos, and also let me know if you've got any suggestions for this team heading into the future. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.